in the fiercely competitive world of 12 volt fridges, there's a new player in the game. Bouge RV. Bouge who? Before I get started, a couple of quick disclaimers. You would have seen at the top of the screen at the very start of the video a sign that said includes paid promotion. The fridge is the payment. I get to keep this fridge forever in lieu of me filming this video review. So I've got to film the review, tell you about it, then I get to keep the fridge. And I'm at the Winton Wetlands, I'm under a corrugated iron roof because it's currently raining and it's a bit windy, so there could be a little bit of uh, raindrop noise in the background. Other than that, let's get started. Bouge RV. Bouge sounds French. RV sounds American. Reminds me of Uncle Eddie in the uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation movie. But there's an RV, Clark. <laughs> Bouge sounds French. RV sounds American. I think the fridge is made in China and it's being reviewed by an Australian. That makes this the most multicultural video on the internet. <laughs> I've done a bit of research. I didn't ask any questions, I just researched it. Bouge RV, from what I understand, the products are made in China and they make a range of products. They make uh, solar panels, fridges, power packs similar to my EcoFlow and even a little 12 volt air conditioner. Made in China, their headquarters are in America and they've been around for about 10 or 12 years. Now this one here is the 22 litre. Bouge RV sent me a list of the whole, uh, the whole range that are available here in Australia and they told me to choose one. And while the temptation was there to choose the biggest one because it's worth the most money, it wasn't the most practical for me. So I chose the 22 litre. I've already got a 15 litre angle, so I didn't worry about choosing the 18 litre because I've already got a fridge that size. So I chose the 22 litre so I had a slightly larger fridge but still maintaining a bit of economy when I run it. Now this is a 12 volt fridge freezer and I'll explain the settings to you shortly but first I'm going to show you how I'll tell you how I've used it and how it's performed. This uh, this runs off, I've been running it off my EcoFlow power pack. It runs off a cigarette lighter adapter and obviously the other end plugs into the fridge but it comes with this box which also has a 12 a, a wall socket adapter and a little uh, converter there. So you can run it off your home power points and you can run it off your, your cigarette lighter in your car or a power pack such as this one. Now, I've had it for about a week and it's winter, so it hasn't been experienced, it hasn't experienced any real heat, but I've run it on my kitchen bench indoors. And I'm gonna give you some, uh, some figures on how well it ran. Right, I plugged it in at 10 a.m. on the Wednesday morning and I set it at 2 degrees and it ran until 2 p.m. Thursday. That's 27 and a half hours straight. Now that was set on 2 degrees Celsius and I pre-cooled it. I got it right down to 2 degrees Celsius and then uh, and then I started from scratch. I plugged it into the wall, I got it down to 2 degrees and I plugged it into the power pack. So I pre-cooled it and it ran on economy mode for 27 and a half hours, which blew my mind. That's a lot longer than my, uh, my Ingle fridge. And in that time, I probably only opened it half a dozen times. I put a few cans of soft drink in there just to see how it would work pretty much. And it worked a treat. That's two degrees and that's indoors in winter. So in that 27 and a half hours, the heater was probably on of the evening before and in the morning, probably had six hours of the room being heated to around 20 to 25 degrees and probably 20 or so hours of the the indoor winter temperature which is probably still 15 or 16 degrees or something. I then recharged my EK flow to full and I put it in the maximum everything. I set it in maximum mode, it's got maximum and economy. I set it in maximum and I ran it at minus 22 degrees. I even put a bucket of water in there and froze it solid. And that ran for the minus 22 not exactly sure how long, but it was seven to eight hours. At the seven hour mark, it was still running and I'd gone to bed and I got up an hour later and it had cut out. So somewhere between seven and a half hours, but that wasn't pre-cooled. That started off at 10 degrees. So we'd had to cool it from 10 plus 10 down to minus 22 and then hold that temperature. And that ran for seven or eight hours. Right, that's how it's performed. Let's have a look now at some of the settings. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna plug this in to my EcoFlow power pack. Right, 
lights just come on. It's currently 10 degrees inside the unit. I'll see if I can move the camera over a little bit to get a better uh, view of what it's saying on the, on the screen there. I don't know how well this is picking this up, but it's currently on 10 degrees. It's on max, and the temperature is set on minus 22. So I'll warm that up to plus two. So basically I've taken it out of freezer mode and into fridge mode and it's on max mode. It has max and it has economy. All the instructions here are how to use it. And I'm not going to go through them because it literally took me two or three minutes to figure it out myself. And there's no point in me making the video long winded and boring because you will be able to work it out very easily. But basically it's got on off. It's got, it, uh, you'll hear it beep in a moment because it locks so that you can't bump any buttons. So you've got on off power economy, temperature adjust, lock and unlock, and very importantly, it's got a protector in it so that when the unit can't draw enough volts from the battery, it cuts out. So this ran for 27 and a half hours before it cut out. And when it cut out, the eco flow was still at around about 30% or 25%, but it couldn't provide enough volts for the fridge. So it cut out and that is to save the, uh, the, the, the compressor inside the fridge. So it's got a screen and all your settings, and you can probably hear it running now. Okay, just, did you hear that beep just then? That's now locked. I have to unlock that before I can make any settings. If I push any buttons, nothing changes. So I've got to hold that button there down. That just unlocked it. Now I can change it. So I'll take it back down to two degrees, wait a few seconds, and it will lock again. Now this is running now, it's purring like a cat. The best way to operate any 12 volt fridge is to pre-cool it first. In other words, if I was coming over here, if I wasn't filming this video, if I was just coming over here for a barbecue or a picnic or camping, run it from the cigarette lighter on my car on the way over so that it can pull right down the temperature while it's running off my car before running power off my power pack. You see, the cigarette lighter on your car is renewable. While you're driving, the alternator is keeping the battery topped up. This isn't renewable, this is draining. So I need to plug this into the car to charge it or a solar panel or a home socket. So the best way to use it is to pre-cool it first, and that's with any fridge. Get it right down cool before you start drawing off a power pack. But for this, uh, for now, it's running off the power pack. Some of the videos I watched spoke about the noise. Oh, it's a little bit noisier than this, a little bit noisier than that. I'm just gonna say that it's about where I thought it should be as far as noise goes. It's a fridge, it's got a compressor in it, it's gonna make some kind of noise, and they're all gonna vary a little bit. Some are gonna be a bit louder than others, but I've got no problems with it, I think. It's about fine. Now, let's have a look at their website. I've got a couple of notes here I'm gonna to refer to. These screenshots are taken directly from the Bouge RV website, and by the way, there will be links below in the video description to the website so that you can go and look at all the different products and different prices and the discounts and stuff that are down there and you can just learn more about it. First of all, look at this slide. That is just stupid. Who on earth takes rabbit food fishing? If I buy a 12 volt fridge, it's not to keep my lettuces, capsicum and fruit and vegetables fresh, that's for sure. <laughs> and what about this one? Well, that's just silly. Who puts their drinks on the fridge? You can't open the fridge. You can't open the lid while they're sitting on the fridge. <laughs> But this one here's a bit more important. Have a look at this. This can be a bit misleading if you're not careful. See all those cans? That doesn't work. I read the reviews below and someone complained that they couldn't get as many drinks in there as I thought they could based on the ad. So I've done a bit of research and what I found is that, and I've got this written down here somewhere, United States, American cans are 355 mil is the standard can size and they're 12.3 centimeters high. Whereas, here in Australia, the can size is 375 mils and they're 12.9 centimetres high. That's 0.6, that's six millimetres taller. That's 1.2 centimetres higher. So here in Australia, you can't fit two 375 cans in. The lid doesn't close. But have a look at this. On the way out of here, I stopped and I bought a couple of Farmers Union ginger beers because they're 355 mils and they fit no worries at all. No problem. So, don't be caught out by that. Don't be caught out thinking that you can you can stack two 375 mil cans on top of each other because it doesn't work. 
I don't think that Bougie RV would have misled people deliberately. I just think there's a difference in standard can sizes in different parts of the world. And here in Australia, you can't stand them too high. They, they just don't fit. They almost fit, but not quite. But the next slide, have a look at this one. The compressor has a two year warranty. So if something goes wrong in the first two years, you're covered by warranty. And I reckon that's pretty cool. Well, folks, that's about all I've got to tell you. I've introduced you to Bouge RV. I've told you how it's performed for me. I've uh, pulled their website apart a little bit. So far, I'm very impressed. I'm really, really happy with it. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you, oh, this is going to last you for years and years because I haven't had it for years and years. I've only had it for a week. So only time will tell how long it's going to last. Even and the bigger name brands would have taken time to establish a reputation. Let's give Bouge RV time and see how they go. What I can tell you is that they're less than half the price of some of the bigger brands of the same size. Half the price. And even though it's cool when I ran it, 27 and a half hours blew my mind. When the weather warms up, that's going to go down. It's not going to run as efficiently, but I suspect it's still going to be quite good. And I'm really looking forward to using this this summer and seeing how it goes. Don't forget to check out the links in the video description below so you can find out more about Bouge RV. Thank you very much, Bouge RV, for giving me a free fridge. And thank you all very much for watching my review.